specifically thank you everybody for your time today and dialing into our webinar, uh, which is a follow on really to a series of events that myself and uh, the team have been at over the last couple of weeks. So my name is Rhys Lewis, I've probably spoken to, uh, to all of you on the line. So hello again. And firstly, what I'd like to do is just uh, a few house check and rules really. Let's just check that you can, you can hear me and you can see my screen. So in the Zoom app that you're using, there's a chat log. Uh, in the chat log, if you could just put in the location that you're based at, maybe the, the city you're in or the company you work for, I can then uh, get started and it tells me that you can hear me. So in the chat log, if you could just put in what country or, or city you're, you're based in, I'll then, I'll start. So we've got some people in the UK, perfect. Portugal, great stuff. I'm in, uh, in South Wales for, for anybody that's interested in heading out to uh, Las Vegas on the weekend out to uh, another conference there. Perfect, so people are coming through and you can all see my screen okay, I'm guessing. I'll, I'll record this session actually and for those that attended, I'll send through a copy of this recording. So. Great, let's get started. So what I'll do then is uh, a lot of you will have seen the, the six minute version of uh, the Revisto introduction at Digital Construction Week or the Middle East BIM Summit or uh, there's been a couple of events we've been at actually. So today really is to give you an extended version of that. So to start at the beginning, we'll run through some slides and then jump straight into the software. Revisto, just to set the scene again, at the core of the heart is a digital collaboration tool, which is quite a broad term, and today I want to get uh, into more of the specifics where we talk about being a smart task management tool. We talk about issue tracking and defect management and clash management, uh, and that people are using individual tools for those different processes. What we're finding is Revisto is now being used as a holistic task management tool, right? to enable better communication during construction. So my role is development director for UK um, and EMEA, and our customer base continues to grow 300% uh, year on year. So the brand new client here yesterday, BDP, this is just a handful of some of the organizations that we're working with. So some of you on the line, uh, I can see some names here from Balthabiti, well, you're a client, um, but big firms are not all of your colleagues are using it just yet, but are starting to. So for us, you can see here, we've got a number of architects, uh, designers, I suppose, multidisciplinary engineering companies, uh, contractors, and then owners and operators, all who are faced with exactly the same problem. And let's say it's communication of tasks. So what we find is every company that we speak to has multiple communication streams on projects, which is difficult to track and manage, right? So what you tend to find is uh, people are still reviewing drawings and models and clashes and as-built models, point cloud data. And what we're saying here is how we communicate looking at those different data sets is in different formats and it's difficult to manage. So you'll have somebody, maybe an architect who's marking up a drawing or a site engineer that's looking at a drawing out on site, watching that asset being built and capturing issues on the go. And then we have models, so how are we communicating problems, questions, tasks when we're looking at models? Well, are we taking snippets of the model and sending screenshots or something else? Clash management, are you using tools like Navisworks or Celebri or visually checking? Uh, how are you sharing those reports then with your, your colleagues or the design team? Again, there's multiple ways of doing that. So we've got HTML files, PDF reports, Excel spreadsheets, P, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it can become quite confusing and tedious when we have to train our staff how to use multiple tools and they're constantly jumping from one to another and inevitably things will get missed, right? So there was a study done by the Harvard Business School which talked about this context switching that we have where you're jumping from one application to another to do your job unnecessarily, we're saying. And if you're doing that in black and white here, you're being told that you're less productive than you can be. So we're here to give you some of that time back. So uh, on average, we're seeing about an hour saving a day uh, per person 
when a company implements Revisto as their tool to manage tasks. We sit on top of Unity, uh, which is a gaming engine, so this accessibility is, is a big thing for us, and I like to use the term gamification of BIM quite a lot. What do I mean by that? Well, we can put lots of different data sets, 2D, 3D, into the hands now of pretty much anybody on any device. We're quite software and hardware agnostic. It's about engagement across the full project life cycle, not just one specific path. So Revisto's lightweight, simple, and easy to use at the forefront. But under the hood, we can actually do quite a lot of stuff. So firstly, we're looking at models, drawings, graphical and non graphical data here in Revisto throughout the project life cycle. So through design, into construction and operation in one platform on multiple different devices. And then because we have one place to look at project information, it means we can get a really laser focused insight into project reports and performance through our live interactive real-time dashboarding systems that are web-based. So single source of truth, something I've been saying since I joined Revisto three years ago, that's truly what we're all about. Um, I just want to, I've actually got a new slide here where we show the many different file formats that we support. So Revisto actually means visual check in Latin, but we do have a Revit plugin. Uh, we also have plugins for Vectorworks, Civil 3D, Inventor, Rhino, and, and lots more. Um, and we can bring in lots of different file formats, 2D, 3D reports, 360 data, scan data from Faro, like uh, lots of different file formats into one easy to use application that BIM gamification is uh, really, really important. So here we are out on site, uh, you know, creating issues on a tablet, which is really simple to do. Um, I'll jump into the application in a bit now, but you probably remember this from the show. So we've now connected to BIM 360 docs where we can pull through our drawings directly from your common data environment. And the big thing about Revisto, if I just rewind that, is the 2D and the 3D are connected. So I don't know whether I wanted to rewind. We click on that green icon here, and that will then overlay that 2D technical detail directly in the model with a single click. Simple and easy to use, as I, I keep saying. So that could be a PDF and a point cloud, and we'll get into the details of that in a second. So I think it was just important to run through some of those things in a bit more detail, just to refresh some of your memories. Uh, and if there are questions throughout the course of the, the presentation, then please just use the chat log to, um, to ask there, or if there's any issues at all with audio or, or something else. So let's, uh, let's set up a project. So we have a demo project here, which is uh, a hospital somewhere in Australia that a client shared with us. So I can show you this today. Uh, so I've got a Navisworks model here and a Revit model with the link files through. And we've installed Revisto, so we have the plugin here at the top. So this plugin appears in all of the tools I've, I've mentioned. So just so happen to be using Revit. But this could be Archicad, Tecla, uh, Civil 3D, soon to be MicroStation. Doesn't really matter. Now for me, I, I'm not a technical user of these tools, which is an important point to make, and I don't need to be. But some of you uh, may be, so maybe I'll throw some questions out to you in a second if I get stuck. So the first thing that we need to do is set up the Revisto project, which is quite simple, uh, but can be as complex as you need it to be. So what we have here is a, uh, a container Revit file with some linked models here. So we can take the models and draw it through from Revit, uh, or if you're a contractor, then you may be receiving NWC, so we can do that from Navisworks. The key thing here is you decide. So for me, I'm going to bring through the models and the drawings from Revit, and then maybe some clashes from Navisworks later on. So there's a couple of buttons here. Uh, I'll show you the export scheduler, just to speed this process up a little bit. So the first thing it's going to do is present me with a list of things that I can take through from Revit. So this is going to take through everything, basically, the metadata associated with the objects, uh, any materials that have been applied here, the room data, uh, phases. We could take point cloud through from here directly if we want to. And importantly, we can also take through the drawing sheets here from this model or from all of these, these models. So again, you decide what comes through. And these drawings can come through directly from Revit, or we can link your project to your CDE uh, so you know you're looking at the, the issued information. Okay, 
and we're ready to export now, but we can actually set this, it's in the name that gives it away a little bit, the export scheduler, to run this export for us automatically. So as part of your execution plan with the project team, you're going to be submitting information every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at seven o'clock. So the architect, the engineer, and everybody else sets this up once, and this export is going to happen now automatically at seven o'clock on each of the days selected here. Now, I don't need to be at my machine for this to happen. I don't need Revit open. As long as that machine is logged on, uh, then this export will happen automatically. Or we can set it to run from, uh, from a server. So that's how you create a project. So this export will run now, probably for five or 10 minutes in this case. And we'll take a look at that project in Revisto. So my desktop here, I've got the Revisto application and uh, we support VR as well. So you can open up this project in the Revisto application on your desktop, on your tablet, or in a VR headset. So the big thing here now is you don't have to be a technical user of Navisworks or Revit or have to look at IFCs or a web browser. You can open up the Revisto application on your desktop or your, your iPad or any tablet in that instance. So if I just show you the workspace first of all, which is what you'll see. So this is my workspace and all of the projects that uh, I've got access to. So there's lots of different types of examples, no matter what it is you're building. It could be a hospital, it uh, could be a, you know, a new skyscraper in uh, London, it could be a refurbishment of a, a church in a cave somewhere in Spain, which is what this is. Uh, we've got the Notre Dame here, uh, infrastructure project in Norway, a football stadium, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So for us, it doesn't really matter. It's a project, right? And I'll jump into some of those as we go through this presentation, but just to show you uh, our sample project for now, which I have linked back to the authoring software. So here's the project, here's the Revisto uh, interface. There's, there's four buttons across the top, so I'll talk about those briefly, and then we can get into, into the details. So at the forefront, we've got our issue tracker, which is now our digital audit trail and single source of truth. So this is where we look to see what is going on. And we can look at this in lots of different ways. So in here, um, I've got some colleagues actually at a conference in Lausanne, in Switzerland, our, our headquarters. There's a BIM conference there going on. So some of the guys there are creating issues and taking pictures on their tablet, you can see. Um, so we've also got issues that have been marked up on, uh, on drawings. And there's clashes that have come through here. So I'll go through all of these in a bit more detail, but just imagine the issue tracker almost like a, a Google search engine for issues on your project. So it's about that accessibility, audibility, and visibility. Each issue has its own unique ID. We can see who it's assigned to and the status here. And every issue has a history, a log, an order trail of who did what, when, where, why. So we can always go back, locate that issue, and understand why that particular task happened, right? And as we create issues throughout the day session, they're constantly being updated through our live dashboarding system, which I'll show you now, where we've got reports and Excel spreadsheets that I've set up. Uh, we've also got a live dashboarding system here, which is looking at the project that we're in now in real time. So I've set up a couple of standard reports. All of these are customizable. Uh, so whenever anything is added, changed, edited here, then that's going to be reflected directly in our dashboarding system. So I can say, show me all of the issues assigned to a Balfour BT on this project or Rambo. Here's everyone at that company on this project and the statuses of the issues. This one is actually overview assignee by status. So Craig is in the lead. These colors are then replicated wherever we look at tasks in Revisto. So open is red, amber's in progress, green is solved. The gray ones have been closed. So if we go back to the issue tracker here, uh, we can see the status of issues in the preview that we get. So open, amber, in progress. And regardless if we're looking at 2D or 3D, as we navigate through the 3D model, we can switch the issues on. We can see them all here. And if we look at the drawing, uh, then we can see all of the issues there as well. And I can turn this cluster up just to make that sheet look a little tidier. We've got 21 issues here. The majority of those are red. You know what that means, open. So let's take a look at those today in our review meeting. Here they all are regardless if they've been created in 2D, on 3D, on an iPad, on your desktop, a clash, we now have one place to go and discuss those with the project team. 
So I'll get more onto that as we navigate through. So that's the issue track, and we'll start to create some samples today. Um, I talked about bringing through your drawings from your CDE. So that's a simple process. Uh, so you can bring your information in from Protocore and link the RFIs there. Box, Aconex, BIM 360, and this list is increasing actually. I've got uh, a call with Viewpoint in a couple of weeks, and, and others are available. So BIM 360, for example, uh, we can select our project workspace and that will then pull through all of the drawings into this project. So if I go up a level here, all of these drawings now will have come through from your chosen CDE. This instance, I've dropped them in from Revit. Doesn't matter, you decide. So all of our drawings are here. So if I just look at any one of these drawings for now, let's maybe take a look at one of these details. The section here, we can see the drawing sheet, the issues on them, I'll just switch them off for now. Uh, so we can pan and zoom the drawing. Uh, they've actually maintained their intelligence, so the links uh, will work and take you to that link sheet. So you could just use Rovisto to, to digitally mark up your drawings, but we've got the model here as well, so it'll link to the model, and that's a big win for us, is the drawings and the models and the issues, everything here are tightly linked to one another. So I'll just show you an example of that here by clicking this green icon. So before I do that, I'll just talk about how we get people into the project. So this project now is uh, either on the cloud or your own local network. So you decide where this project lives, depending on the nature and security sensitivity around that project. Uh, so I invite the relevant people into this project. So I'll take Craig here. I've set up some access levels here where certain uh, access levels can and can't do certain things. I then invite uh, Craig, give him relevant access, click OK. He's already in this project. Let's uh, make him administrator. He'll now receive an email and has access to that project. So let's imagine I've invited you all in this session to this. So I just go back to 2D. So you'll be able to open up the Revisto application and then do what I'm about to show you. So just by clicking on this green link, there's still a big gap between those that prefer to look at 2D and those that prefer to work in 3D. Just watch, watch what happens here. So we can now overlay that drawing directly in the model itself. So we can turn some of these views on and off. But if I come in here, you can see I've isolated and color coded the model here, which we can switch off if need be so. But we can now start to coordinate between 2D and 3D. Now there's some things set up at the bottom, so if they're white, then they're switched on. Let's just turn that off. I can now start to really get a good understanding of what's going on here, or, or what's not happening, I suppose. This is a really powerful engagement tool, but also a really powerful coordination tool. You can't do this anywhere else. This is unique to Revista. And what I mean by that is this could be a PDF and a point cloud, which I'll show you shortly. So the drawings are here. It's linked to the 3D model, so if I click on 3D and select this house button, that takes me to this start view. And then there's a number of tools here in 3D, which I can show you. Um, navigation, first of all, so back to my earlier point of gamification, I'm being sat on top of a gaming engine, there's a number of navigation options for us. So I can stick with Revit or Navisworks if I want to, I'll just use the gaming controls, which are the four keys, uh, W, A, S, and D, and the arrow keys. So if I select 3D, I can now use those four keys to start to navigate through this project, which can be as large as it needs to be. We can press the model file size down quite considerably. So just imagine this is uh, a, the Revisto application running on your one of your senior execs tablets or desktops. They haven't had to open up Tecla, Navisworks, Revit, or Celebrity, or anything else. And they can start to navigate through here. Let's just select that walk-in mode simply and easily. So, some other tools we've got here, uh, there's a sectioning tool, a measuring tool, so let's just show you those. Uh, if I click on the sectioning tool here, we can position this and start to cut sections. And we'll leave that there, so we can cut section box, section planes. It's lightweight and easy, we can jump around room by room, uh, we can go in here and take a measurement, so maybe I want to know uh, the minimum distance between two objects, so maybe this particular object and that object, uh, that needs to be 2.5 meters for a certain piece of maintenance equipment to come through here. 
So now let's start to ask questions, create tasks, issues, whatever you want to call them. To do that, there's now one way. So the project team can start to communicate using a common language when it comes to issue management. So no, no matter if you're in Revisto, Revit, Navisworks, Tecla, Archicad, we've always got this plus icon available. So directly in Revisto now, we could do that in Revit or Navisworks. The difference is now they're going to get tracked in the issue tracker. So let's create an issue. And I want to show you the details here. Um, and then we'd we'll start to speed up this process. So this blue marker I'm positioning here is intelligent. It's based on the project's coordinate system. So I'll just put it here. I've now got some markup tools directly in Revisto, so I don't have to use another piece of, pardon me, markup software. So let's, uh, let's go in here and mark this up. I'll keep this quite simple. There's a number of different options here. We can turn the opacity down if we wanted to, to maybe 40% change the color of the bubble to blue and then go in and add some text uh, needs to be 2.5 uh, meters we can change the the unit as well should we need to so that that will do that makes sense to me and we'll just give the issue a name say access uh, issue for now done now as soon as i do that that automatically logs it to the issue tracker as you can see here It'll give it a unique ID, so it's uploaded now. So that one's 3019, logged. Now what I want to do is tell somebody to go, to go and look at this and, and track it. So it's automatically been logged. I just fill in some of these boxes now. So what I'm going to do is assign this to one of my colleagues. So you're all listed here in the project. So if I just assign this to my colleague Tristan, who's at a conference in Lausanne, let's see if he, uh, he receives this. So as soon as I assign that issue to Tristan, he will receive a notification in real time and he'll get sent an email which can be uh, the notifications can be adjusted slightly if need be so so i can then add some additional information to the issue standard things a deadline uh, two weeks time before our next uh, review uh, it's quite important so we'll mark it as major uh, tristan's now come online you probably hear that ping so it's notified me here so we've got a live chat here where we can start to communicate. Thanks, Tristan. So he's also changed the status to in progress. Uh, there's some additional fields here that we can add, like watches, so CC on an email, for example. So we'll CC uh, Armand, and we can also tag issues. So I'm the project manager. I've set up these tags, and these just add another level of information to your issues, which are useful then when you want to search what you're looking for. Uh, and produce reports. So maybe we'll tag this, uh, one of these standard tags we've created, maybe it's work package, particular consultant, uh, let's just say it's MEP for now, quite generic, done. So we've added that information to the issue and it's logged. This isn't going anywhere. This is now our audit trend. So I'll just imagine I'm Tristan. So I've received this the other side. Tristan now can take a good look at this uh, particular markup he's received right a digital uh, markup if he clicks on 3d it'll show him exactly where that is if he clicks on 2d it'll also tell tristan if that issue affects any drawing here that comes through so you can see i've turned that cluster off all of the issues on here the colors again you know what they relate to the status right uh, the blue one is the one that's been selected and it's taking me to this mechanical services pipe worksheet It'll also tell me if that affects any other drawing sheet. So the communication of that issue now has been delivered in real time. We've got audit trail. And what and where the issue is for Tristan is now very clear. The next step is for Tristan to go and locate where this is in his authoring software. So what I'll do here is to show you how that works. So Tristan has Revit installed. What he's going to do is link his Revit model to Revisto, this one is, and then synchronize uh, the issue. So he hasn't had to export the model. He's looking at it uh, here in real time. So when he needs to go and locate where this issue is in his authoring software, he double clicks on the issue here, and that will take him to the direct space in his Revit model, Navisworks model, for him to go and fix that. So if I just swap that to Navisworks and do the same thing, Let's just make sure it's linked to the right project. Okay, 
and click on the issue tracker and do that again double click instant so Tristan now hasn't had to think too hard about where that issue is or spend 20 minutes trying to locate where that location is Revisto takes all of those manual tasks away from your staff so they can get back to doing what you're paying them to do and enjoy doing, whether that's been an architect, a contractor, a project manager. They're not now sat there sending emails, filling in Excel spreadsheets or trying to work out what um, and where this particular issue is. So I've taken my time there sort of explaining how we create an issue and how we assign it to somebody. This is now reflected in our reporting system. It's been assigned to Tristan in real time and takes him exactly to where that issue is in his authoring software. Let's speed this process up now, right? So we thought we could make this process even leaner, and we've done that using our stamps, which is what these circle icons here. They allow the user to single click, and it automatically creates and assigns that issue to somebody instantly. So what I'll do here is if I try and be clever, I'll open up my iPad at the same time and see if this will allow us to do what I want to. So the stamp, if we go to one of these areas, let's go back into 3D. Uh, let's cut a, we can actually navigate through room by room. So maybe this time we'll, we're in the plant room, we're out on site with a tablet, right? So I've got my tablet in front of me here as well. So this will take me directly to the center of that room. And if I click on that eye icon, it'll give me all of the information about that room. So this is an information model. Um, you can hear that ping, so the iPad is, just opening up that project. I'm out on site, uh, maybe without an internet connection. So I can select these objects and it's going to give me all of the information about them as well. And in here we can embed hyperlinks maybe to uh, O&M manuals or asbestos report, uh, reports or whatever it may be. Just trying to connect to Wi-Fi on my tablet. So what we're going to do now is use the stamp. So I'll, maybe we'll cut a section. Let's actually select the object this time and cut a section. So we'll, we'll do this, so select the sectioning tool, and there's a number of ways of cutting these section boxes. We'll just go like that for now. Uh, maybe that's a bit too much information. We can get rid of the ceiling. So let's drop that down here. That'll do, I think. Uh, we'll push that in a little bit because, again, we've got another issue out on site with access here. So rather than now positioning the blue marker, assigning this to whoever it is that needs to get assigned that issue, you see my iPad has just come online, I can select the stamp. Now the stamp is a predefined issue that has been created uh, for the team by the project manager. So when they are out on site, all they have to do is select uh, the relevant stamp, and there's lots of different examples here. So if I select this one, click on the model, that now automatically creates the issue with all of those fields predefined. So think, think single click issue management. The user now has enough to do everything I've just shown you. It's done and created automatically and be logged here in the issue tracker. Same as the one we created earlier on. So that works in 2D and 3D, so it doesn't really matter where you are. If we, we can mark up, as I did earlier on, on the 2D drawing, but we'll use the stamp this time. Uh, let's see what have we got here. Lots of, so all of these are customizable and you can, you can use these to your benefit. So maybe I'll just, uh, I'll create a stamp actually, that may be easier. So we'll call this event follow-up webinar. We'll put an abbreviation in there. I've created some categories. So one of these is for site operations, and we'll just put in here webinar, the defect, that'll do. And then we just fill in these fields. So what I'm going to do is change the color of this to, actually we'll stay there, that'll do. Uh, who's the assignee? This is going to go to uh, Tom. We want to add uh, Tristan and Sasha to these issues and we can make them private because these are our, this is our defect report, and maybe we can add a tag here related to NNE, the particular contractor. So that's now created that for me here. So anybody in the project 
can now use that stamp to go and create uh, their issues. So part of the implementation would be setting up these stamps where you can just see it's really easy to do. We would just offer our advice, I suppose. So when the team are out on site with their uh, devices, just reset the filter here and show you how this comes through. So I'm now just going to select my tablet and maybe jump to one of these drawing sheets and we'll select the stamp. I wonder actually if I can show you this and then I'm actually real. So if I stop sharing my screen and show you my camera. So here's the device, everything I'm showing you, we can actually do directly on the tablet. I'm not too sure if that uh, is too good, but the stamps are now loaded down here. So I go to site operations, which is a category we save this into, and select the relevant stamp that we called <laughs> one of these and then we can start to position those directly on the drawing sheet like so so all of these stamps are available and then as we're out on site we can select that i've just selected one there we'll do it again the ft click on that drawing sheet or the model and then we can actually take a picture and we'll take a picture of my lovely artwork behind me log that and that's now been logged automatically in the issue tracker. So if I stop sharing my camera, which can be confusing, but just so you know, it, it's me. Uh, we'll go back here, back to the issue tracker. And there's that issue that I just created on my tablet. You can see it's been logged here. In the issue tracker, exactly the same way as we just did using my desktop. So I can then start to communicate with that team out on site if they have an internet connection. But the big thing is they actually don't need an internet connection to work. They can still communicate and log issues when they are offline. Well, they, they can't communicate them. They would be logged and then they would reconnect when they have an internet connection, so they'd be marked as purple. Right, so same issue, we've marked up that, uh, or created a stamp on that drawing. Craig back in the office now wants to go and fix this on his uh, desktop using his authoring software. So again, all he does is let's click on the issue tracker in Revit or Tecla or AutoCAD or Archicad, whatever it is that person is using. If that drawing sheet is loaded here, that will take that person directly to that drawing sheet in their authoring software. So let's spend a little bit more time explaining the setup and what's actually happening. In reality, this is a much quicker process because we just stamp in the drawing sheet, that gets communicated to Craig and he's straight in. So we'll create a few more actually where these are much faster paced. So you can see there's the stamp I created on my tablet. It's been assigned to Craig and automatically he receives that double click and that takes him exactly to where that drawing sheet is in his authoring software. So that we're finding is being used much more comp comprehensively because it, it allows us to create a standard set of tasks, uh, just call these tasks today, that we can then start to communicate out to the team in a much quicker way. So you can see regardless if I'm in 2D or 3D, we just select that stamp, click, that's been logged. Maybe we're in a review session with the, the architect and the engineer and we spotted some stuff as we're going through here and these need to be moved so I'll create a task and this one relates to these guys click. Uh, right guys, we need to look at level two or three or in, uh, in a particular room. So you can just see as a design review tool, really, really, really powerful, a tool to deliver models and drawings to the people out on site. Again, lightweight, easy to use, uh, but then more importantly, to communicate and track what's going on, that's our core strength. So a health and safety issue up here, click, logged. So the, the, um, the stamps here are proven to be a really robust, lean way of 
BIM management, BIM coordination. Again, there's multiple ways of referring to that, but what we've got now is a live, real-time audit trail. It's what's going on. The team can communicate with each other using a common platform, and it's tracked and logged always and linked back directly to the author and software. So these reports here, again, are being updated in real time. I mentioned these being customizable, and I'll show you that uh, after I show you bringing through some clashes. So the issue tracker is quite a flexible system that can be used quite diversely. So for managing RFIs, clashes, snags, FM related tasks. So there's a quite a mixture of you on today's calls. I'm trying to be quite broad with this. Hopefully I'm making sense. And uh, if I am, Maybe in the chat log to say yes or, or no. Um, I won't be offended either way. Hopefully I am. So the issue tracker, I mentioned earlier on, is almost like a Google search engine. So now that the, the fields we've added like NNE are in the tags, we can then say, you know, there's a thousand issues in here. I want to see all of the issues that have been tagged. That work package, that consultant, there we go, that's reduced that to two, and I can see who it's assigned to, and issue 2731 is actually overdue. I can save this then as a preset. Click Create, and then whenever issues are created that meet that criteria, you can see here's one we created for our uh, session with our client Bosch, one for Murphy's, one for health and safety. You can see the number here will drop down. So the next thing I want to talk about is bringing through clashes. And I've created a report here, or list for clashes that have come through from Navisworks or Celebri. So let's do that. Any questions so far before I jump in to, to Navisworks and bring through some clashes? So in Navisworks, again, we have the plugin here. So Robusto doesn't do clash detection. We're the, the, the management piece behind that. So you run your clash detection in Navisworks or Celebri using Navisworks today. So what we can do here is then bring these clashes through and communicate them and track them as we've done with the other tasks and issues via Robusto. So again, we don't have to share a PDF report or an NWD or a HTML file with the team. We do all of that via Revisto. So as the, the BIM coordinator, I've run the clash detection. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with this process, you've probably noticed statuses in Revisto and Navisworks are slightly different, but they mean the same thing. So what we're going to do here is synchronize the statuses. So we do that. We then go through and we can assign the issues to, or the clashes here, to the people in the team. Or we can do that in Revisto. Again, you decide. The system's quite flexible to allow you to work in a way that you prefer. So I'll go through here and assign these clashes to the relevant team. And then again, rather than exporting out uh, another report, I'm just going to click export here for the set first time. Following that, we can synchronize. There's, now there's some quite quirky tools in here, quirky, useful tools where we can update the view and the section box size and so on and so forth. Export. We come into Revisto, and all of the clashes now appear here in the Revisto tracker. So Brett, Craig, Sasha here, ping, 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 ping. And they've now been assigned clashes directly in Revisto. So if we take a look at this one that's been assigned to Craig. So it looks, um, in terms of how we're logging it here, exactly the same way as that stamp we just created on the drawing. But these images here that we get from Navisworks aren't too useful. So Again, we've still got that intelligence of where the issue is in the project. So if I click on 3D, that now has automatically cut the section box and isolated that view for me so I can see exactly where that clash is using those gaming controls. We can play around with the visibility here and show what's been affected. There are actually five individual insta instances here. So if you're grouping clashes, those would come through here automatically. So they've come through and we can see exactly where they are. We also then tell Craig where those clashes are on any of the drawings in this project that's come through from any consultant that submitted them. So again, where that clash is and what's been affected all of a sudden becomes a much more informative task using Revisto to do that. 
Craig wants to go and fix this now in his Revit model. You remember how we do that? Well, we simply double click on this blue box. I was linked to Revit there and it happened too quickly then. That's now taken me exactly to that location where the relevant section box got automatically in Revit or Tecla or Civil 3D or any of the other tools we support instantly. So you just think about how much time is spent if you're doing some of the things that I've talked about, exporting out a report, sending that PDF report or HTML file or BCF file to, to somebody. They need to download and digest that and then figure out what they need to solve and then figure out where that is in their authoring software. Not anymore with Revisto. They get assigned it to you in real time. They double click, that takes them exactly to where that issue is in their authoring software for them to get straight to work. So we'll imagine I fixed this now. I can then come back to the issue tracker and mark this as solved. Now everyone on the call that I've invited to this project can't see the magic close button, only I can do that. And that's managed, you remember, through permissions. So that gets marked as solved. The next time we synchronize our clash report from Navisworks, this issue would get closed out automatically. And I've got a list of the closed issues here. So they don't just get deleted, I can see all of those. In terms of review, actually, probably important to mention myself as a project manager, I've set up a to-do list here for myself. So these are issues that have uh, apparently been dealt with. So the team have been marking them out as solved. Great. So right at the beginning, I talked about bringing through that model information uh, at a set schedule. So that can come through as and when you need it to. And here's the original uh, mark if your door's been asked to change. So that's uh, a couple of weeks old now. So to be marked as solved, I can now jump to 3D, as you remember, or 2D and check the live version of that drawing sheet. Uh, we've actually got a drawing sheet compare tool that will be available in the next uh, couple of weeks. Maybe I'm giving too much away now, but there'd be another little button here where you could see uh, if that's been changed or not. Right now, you just switch between the live and the previous. This one hasn't been moved, so I'm going to go back here, change the status to in progress, and change the assignee now to, or maybe we'll leave it as Craig, but what I'm going to do is add a watcher to this, who's Tristan, or Sasha, anybody really, and then say, can we review again? And that now has been pushed back to the team. Maybe I can copy in somebody else. And vice versa, if an issue has been solved, like this one, then I can just go in and close that out. So, showing you quite a lot, as I said, but you may be using Revisto just to manage clashes. You may be using it as a defect tool where you're delivering drawing to models to the team out on site. So the process is slightly different in terms of what stage of the project you're at and when is information coming through. What's not different and exactly the same is how we assign, manage, and track these questions that we're asking each other on the project. Now, when do we stop asking each other questions during a construction project? and during the operation of that facility. Never, right? So we've seen Revisto being used, as I said at the beginning, right throughout the process, which is great because we've got one tool for communicating tasks and questions that's used throughout the life cycle of the project, as opposed to jumping from one tool to another to another, which is confusing, expensive, and we're leaving money on the table by doing that. We can help you digitalize those processes right now, immediately. I think I've probably covered quite a broad range there and hopefully I've hit some of the sweet spots that are, are of interest to your organizations. Um, I'll stop and take a breath because we're coming up to the 45 minute mark, which is where I wanted to keep that today.